I know I'm reading a romance book, but it feels like I'm reading a thriller. Your honor, don't put him in jail. He was just a little confused. His daddy wasn't very nice to him. Last week, I innocently decided to vlog my experience trying to get out of a reading slump, and I accidentally ended up capturing the exact moment that I read the worst book of the year so far. This book. Oh, it's so weird. <clears throat> So whenever I want something light to read, I pull out the trashy romances uh, and that's why I ended up picking up Misfit by Elle Kennedy. This is a high school drama about Sandover Prep School, which is full of rich teenagers brimming with hormones. This book ended up subjecting me to romanticizing stalking, a very problematic student teacher hookup, and worst of all, someone using the pet name Cupcake for their girlfriend. This was supposed to be like a normal vlog, um, but enjoy my live response to reading this book. <laughs> enjoy my pain. <sighs> Moving on to the book that I'm currently listening to, it is this, Misfit by L. Kennedy. Now, should I be reading this book? Absolutely not. I'm clearly not the target audience for this book, but I have to tell you a little bit of a story. So I have kind of a bit of a love-hate relationship with L. Kennedy. She is the one who wrote Paper Princess from the Royal series, which is one of my most hated books of all time. It's about this high school girl, she's 17 and somehow also a stripper, and she has to live in this beautiful rich mansion of her step family, uh, where she lives with her like four hot stepbrothers. Well, you see where this is going. Like just one example, one of the scenes that happens in that book is that our main character gets roofied and then our love interest saves the main character from the guy that roofied her, which is good. But then the plot is that our love interest is just gonna have sex with our main character anyway, because she's drugged. So someone needs to take the edge off. She's still under influence. So that's still really, really bad of you to do, but it's portrayed as something that's like totally okay and normal. Horrendous. And the book's like full of things like that. Um, so that's why I don't like Elle Kennedy, but for some reason I also ended up reading another book by her called The Deal, which takes place in college. I actually really, really loved this book. It was one of the best chemistry between two romantic characters that I'd ever seen in a romance book, even though the book is still full of like casual misogyny. So as you can tell, I just have a weird relationship with Elle Kennedy and I have a friend who is kind of in the same situation. So Elle Kennedy is kind of like our inside joke. So when she came out with a new book, we were like, let's just buddy read this to see what kind of trash fire this is or if we're gonna enjoy it anyway. About like four perspectives of people on this like really preppy school. And so far it's just about the, these teenagers lusting after each other, talking about sex and drugs and alcohol and parties, and it's horrendous. I potentially will put me even deeper into this reading slump, throw me into a pit of despair that I will never get out of, or it's gonna be like so hilariously bad that I'm not gonna be able to stop reading. We'll see where it goes. <laughs> What a disaster of a book. Either the author, L. Kennedy, is just creating a fictional version of what she as an adult thinks teenagers behave like, or I'm learning some dark things about the other teenagers in my high school. What What is happening? <laughs> It's so weird. I would say kind of the main character is this guy, RJ, who is not a rich dude, but somehow did end up in this school. So he like hates everyone. And he has this obsession with the daughter of the, the head of school, this girl named Sloane, who is very cool. She doesn't date shit from everyone. She will stomp all over you. Um, and he likes that. And literally the moment that he meets her, he's just like, I want to put my in her mouth. Sir, you are 18 years old. <laughs> when we're in Sloane's perspective, she's like, I'm gonna change my life around. I'm gonna become a good person. I'm gonna study hard so I can get into college. I'm done with all this partying and all the drugs and all the alcohol. And I'm done hooking up with these bad boys. And I'm just like, 
Girl, you just turned 18. You just turned 18. I know rationally, I, I know people did this in high school, but it's like so far removed of my personal experience in high school <laughs> that I'm reading this and I'm just like, I'm not here to just like make fun of a book that just talks about like people being wild. But of course, Elle Kennedy strikes again with all of her casual, weird, just the bad influence on kids things. There's this moment where Sloane gets a text from this guy RJ who was, you know, into her, you know, the guy that was thinking about how he wants to put his in her mouth. Consider this, they met for like a few minutes, had a quick talk, they didn't even exchange names and then because he's a hacker, he found out her number and he found out her, her name so he sends her a text with like, hey I found your number and your name, hi she receives this text and you know what her reaction is? That I'm supposed to be like running away scared right now. No, she's like, oh my god, kind of hot that he found out. That's kind of attractive. <laughs> oh, this is a disaster. So my friend who I'm budding reading this with is already way ahead of me. She's almost finished it. She just texted me saying, I missed the person I was before I read this book. So that bodes very well for me. Okay, so this book currently... <clears throat> book currently seems to be working up towards a threesome between one of the students and two of the teachers. This book is so ridiculous. I have- I think I have to sit down for a second to talk to you guys about it. Hello, welcome to the corner of book discussions. I know this was supposed to be a vlog, but you're going to get a wide expose of all of the horrors that this book is currently inflicting on my mind. I'm about halfway into Misfits. And this has got to be one of the worst books I've read this year so far. Um, <laughs> so I've decided to just share the pain with you. There's like two plot lines that have me in the chokehold the most because they're just so bizarre. The first one is RJ and Sloan, our little stalker romance. And the second is the surprising addition of our character Lawson, um, who I had the misfortune of reading their POV in which they are lengthily fantasizing about their English teacher and his English teacher's wife, who is also a teacher. And he just makes this declaration of, I'm going to f these teachers. And that is a legitimate plot line in this book, from which I'm still asking myself, who was this written for? What is the age category of people that is supposed to be reading this book? Oh, and amidst all of that, there's this plot line going on where there's a fighting ring underneath the school where the boys just brawl it out. Because if it's not socially acceptable to kiss your homies, you just fight them in a dimly lit cellar. And RJ is going to fight the king of the school so that he beca can become the king himself. It's basically what boys with no movie comprehension skills think the movie Fight Club is. Okay, let's start with the stalker romance. So Sloane and RJ are dating. He keeps rizzing her up because he can talk about, you know, her favorite bands and her favorite things. And she's like, oh my god, we're so similar. And he's like, ha ha ha, I found this online. He he he, she doesn't know. But this romance book is a very good example of where you're like, I know I'm reading a romance book, but it feels like I'm reading a thriller because we are in RJ's point of view and we j can just see him thinking, making plans, like, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say I like this band because I saw online that she's really into this band and if I do this and if I don't do that, then it's, that's like, this is gonna be the perfect way to get her to slowly fall in love with me and I can tell she's this kind of girl, so I should say these kind of things and this is how I'm gonna make sure she falls for me perfectly, this perfect manipulation. This man invented weird pickup artistry. The weird pickup artist of YouTube probably bowed down to this 18 year old creepy guy. And when you're in Sloane's point of view, you can see her slowly falling in love with this guy and being like, wow, he, he really kind of understands me and I'm slowly starting to trust him. I don't trust anyone. And you can tell that she is starting to share things about her past and her troubled family because all of these characters have like troubled family stories because of course they do. And it's really weird and creepy, but it's supposed to be romantic. 
Now, at first I was kind of scared that this was just not going to be addressed, but of course, you know, <laughs> around the halfway of the book, um, she finds out, she finds out that he's been hacking her. He's a hacker and he's been looking into her stuff and he's been saying exactly what she wants to hear. Luckily, she does get angry, but you think, okay, th this is over, right? This, there's no redeeming this. This is so creepy, this romance. It's done. No, no, no. It's just a little, a little hiccup little hiccup in their romance, okay? It's just a little plot point to get over. She's talking to her sister and her sister has the gal to be like, well, girl Sloan, you're also not perfect. Like, you've let guys on sometimes. You can't really be mad at this psycho stalker who has been hacking into your computer, figuring out hidden things about you online and perfectly crafting a version of himself so that he can get into your pants. <sighs> You're also not perfect because sometimes you flirt with guys you don't want to sleep with. Even. And what follows is the very classic, oh, but he has a sad backstory spiel where he tells her about his criminal father and how his mother doesn't really care about him and that he's starting to see that maybe he's using the hacking as like a coping mechanism and she's like, wow, I can't understand you because I also have a bad family, so it's fine. <laughs> and she does the classic, the classic white boy excuse of, well, looks like he's just a little confused. Your Honor, have you considered the fact that the persecutor might have just been a little confused? Your Honor, don't put him in jail. He was just a little confused. His daddy wasn't very nice to him. They're dating now and he's training to fight her ex-boyfriend in the ring of Sandover Prep School. <laughs> and the funniest thing is that a few chapters later we get RJ's point of view and he's reflecting on what he's done and he has the fantastic, just life-changing, world-shattering epitome where he's like, wow, I think maybe if you try to find things out about people by just looking at them online, you don't actually know them. <laughs> You think? This, by the way, does not stop him from continuing the hacking and stalking online later in the book. He just stops doing it to Sloane. Because like I said, these characters are misogynistic or just generally morally corrupt unless it's for a woman that they have a crush on, you know. Then not, but everyone else, it's fine. Excited to see where that's going. And then... We have the teach we have the teacher storyline. We have this one character called Lawson. He's bisexual, so we have a little bit of LGBT representation, but it's a horrible representation because it's the classic he is an extremely like slutty sleeps around with everyone character. It's the very stereotypical oh bisexual people just have sex with everyone all the time stereotype. So that it's kinda sad to see that. Like, come on, it's 2023, are we still doing this? But there's a twist, because, you know, he wants to sleep with his teachers. <laughs> it's different here. I was listening to this while I was on my bike, heading to the grocery store, and I had to sit through a chapter in which his English teacher calls Lawson to his office and is like, bro, you need to do your homework. And Lawson, the man, the myth, takes this opportunity to just shamelessly flirt with his teacher and I'm not talking like they're flirting. I'm talking he is graphically talking about sex and the sex that the teacher has with his wife and he is you know insinuating that the teacher is bisexual which again so we get the very wonderful little side storyline of a teacher figuring out that he might not be straight but instead bisexual because of his crush on that student boy who just turned 18. Side note, they keep, throughout the entire book, the author keeps emphasizing that all these characters aren't 18, they all just turned 18. You can't say anything, because all of these characters, they all just turned 18, so you have to shut your mouth. <laughs> Doesn't make it any less weird that this is high school. I know I said before I like the student teacher romance, but not if it's in a high school setting, because that's always weird. And if you just turned 18, that's like weird. And also there's a too much of a abuse of power that can happen here. Anyway, so you think, okay, this teacher is 100% gonna get super angry at this student, right? And immediately 
tell him to go. No, no, no. He's getting a little flustered. Ugh. He's getting a little speechless. Ugh. He's not sending him away. <laughs> Until eventually he does and Lawson is like, oh, let me, maybe let me give you my number just in case something about the homework comes up. Do you want me to leave it here? And the teacher is like, yeah. Yeah, leave your number here. Oh, if we're going to actually, if this book is actually this, again, YA book is going to actually give me a threesome between a student, a high school student who just turned 18 and two of his teachers. I am going to call the police. I'm going to play some more Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and listen to this audiobook and I will keep you posted on where the hell this is going. Okay, so not even three minutes later, I start listening and the chapter just opens with Lawson hooking up with his teacher. Mm jump scare that was a jump scare and let me tell you the last time that they interacted was that scene where they were in his office and you know the the romantic tension between them was like here it was like at the start you know the teacher not wanting to admit that maybe he has feelings for a student um and then the next scene immediately boom they're doing it in a closet or like his office secretly doing it and Lawson's like tell me what to do I'm not gonna give you the details it's too gross I don't like this yet again I ask myself who was this book written for I understand the appeal of a, a forbidden romance totally understand that don't get me wrong but this is between like someone who just turned 18 and a teacher and it's like is this rich is this YA is this for teenagers because it was pretty graphic Makes me feel like this is written for adults, but that's even weirder. The quick escalation of uh, this scene really makes me feel like we're definitely gonna get a story progression where the wife also enters this little threesome and I'm not excited about it, but I will keep you posted. Hello, I just listened for like two hours straight while playing Zelda. I still have half an hour left and I'm g I genuinely don't know how they're, how they're gonna tie every plot line up in half an hour. I need a cup of tea to get myself through this. Okay, let's go. Good morning. Let's sit down again, shall we? Okay. I have no words. I say before launching into a long rant about this book. So, um, <laughs> one thing I can say looking back at this book is that Lawson really carried the plot, like him trying to riz up his teachers. A lot to say about that, but it was definitely the most intriguing part to read. But let's start with our stalker romance, Sloane and RJ, the relationship that started off very normal with a violation of privacy. You know, I will say looking back, I think I misjudged RJ. I said that he was kind of a creep, kind of a stalker, giving incel vibes, but I've come to realize that I just am misunderstanding him, you know? Because the thing about RJ is he is doing all this hacker stuff. He doesn't care about what other people think of him. He's training for like the underground fighting ring and he's extremely good at it. He's extremely good at every sport that he starts. The thing about RJ, is that he is a sigma male. He's a lone wolf. He doesn't need other people. And I think I just don't have the brain capacity to fully understand RJ's superiority as a sigma male. So I have to sincerely apologize for that. So how Sloane and RJ's plotline ends up is he goes into the fighting ring, fights, you know, the current king of Sandover Prep School, which is also Sloane's ex-boyfriend. And of course he wins because he like hacked into his bank account and is like, if you don't let me win, I'm gonna steal your money. So he learned nothing. He's still hacking. And Sloane is totally okay with it. It's t again, like I said, it's totally fine to be a horrible person as long as you don't do it to 
girls that you personally are into. You know how every romance, every main romance always needs to have a third act breakup? So whenever I see two characters get together, I'm always thinking, I wonder what kind of stupid thing the author's gonna come up with <laughs> to make them break up in the third act. You know what Elle Kennedy did to break R. Jane Sloan apart for a second? They brought in the fact that it's a problem that apparently before RJ even came to this school, Sloane hooked up once with RJ's stepbrother, who wasn't his stepbrother at the time. RJ didn't know both of these people when they had a brief hookup, and this becomes a huge problem. He's going to his stepbrother like, how dare you sleep with my girlfriend? I can't believe this happened. And it's like, they didn't know you. <laughs> you didn't know them. I mean, granted, they probably should have told him this a little earlier. I understand he's angry, but all in all, this is just, I was tuning out while reading this because it was just so obviously just a third act breakup that wasn't very interesting. What is interesting and what I know you guys all want to know about is what happened with Lawson's storyline. The funny thing about Lawson's storyline is that it's the only storyline that is just completely separate from all the others. So we have all these other storylines like RJ and Sloane's romance, which is intertwined with like the fighting club going on. And there's like something with his stepbrother. They all have their own family problems that are intertwined with each other. And then there's Lawson's storyline. He's just on the side, gaslighting, gatekeeping, girl bossing, trying to flirt with his teachers. <laughs> Why was this plot line there? There was absolutely no reason for Lawson's plot line to be there other than that L. Kennedy was like, let me just add a plot line of a 18 year old student trying to have a threesome with his teachers. Wouldn't that be so exhilarating? <laughs> and it was, he carried the plot. So I already told you that he ended up hooking up with his English teacher named Jack. And this continues, you know, he gets an email from his English teacher. He's like, if you want extra credit, meet me after class. Oh. But of course he does not stop with just one person because Lawson's bisexual. And we all know that bisexual people just need to hook up with everyone all the time, preferably infidelity. It's their favorite thing. So he continues flirting with his English teacher's Jack's wife, who is also the art teacher at their school, right? That's the little triangle going on. <laughs> This is the funniest thing. This art teacher, Gwen, is talking to Lawson after class. Do not ask me why she decides to tell this to a random 18 year old student, but she's like, yeah, I'm just having some troubles at home. <laughs> I'm just having some marriage problems. And she's like, you really shouldn't get married at 20 years old. It's too early. And she just keeps telling this random boy in her class, like, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like my husband hasn't been the same lately. It's Jack, it's the English teacher that's been hooking up with Lawson. She's telling Lawson, I don't know. I think I have a feeling that he might be cheating on me. And Lawson's just there like, oh, oh, that sucks so much for you. <laughs> so awful for you that you can't, you know, like, get back at him. <laughs> and then she kisses him. Ugh. She initiates. Um, and now Lawson has hooked up with both Jack the English teacher and his wife Gwen the art teacher. Score. And it's just so funny because we constantly get these two teachers coming to a loss and being like, yeah, I feel like my wife is not the same as usual. I, I kind of feel like she's cheating on me. And then his wife is like, yeah, I kind of feel like my husband's not the same thing. He's cheating on me. And Lawson's just there like, oh, golly, that's so bad. <laughs> you know, if he wasn't 18 and this wasn't a high school student teacher romance, I would be laughing and this would be a genuinely hilarious, genius plotline written by Elle Kennedy. But I know better. I know that we are working up towards the threesome of hell. Towards the end of the book, when RJ has defeated the king of school in the ring, everyone's like, partying, Lawson gets super, super drunk, and he starts texting Gwen, his art teacher, uh, like, hey, can you come over? And Gwen is like, I really can't. And this is the moment that Lawson's like, oh, is he laying next to you? Can't he see it? And this was the moment where I was like, oh my gosh, it would be so funny right now if Lawson started texting both of them at the same time while they're both in bed lying next to each other. That would be hilarious, but alas, 
missed opportunity for L. Kennedy. What does happen is Gwen gets out of bed and meets Lawson in one of the classrooms and they hook up. Remember that Lawson is severely intoxicated at this point, which you have to notice, like you notice it when someone is severely intoxicated, which means that we didn't just have borderline statutory. At this point, it's just regular because Lawson is extremely drunk. Um, this is again not addressed. None of these things are addressed. It's just, it's just a fun little, fun little sexy plot line, I guess. But what then happens? Let's keep it light, okay? What then happens? Oop! Plot twist. Someone turns on the light. Someone is in the school, turns on the light, sees them hooking up. Who is it standing in the doorway? It's Jack, the English teacher, and he is looking at his wife hooking up with the exact same dude that he has been secretly having an affair with. Lawson is the main character of the story and all the other characters are just living in his world. And Lawson's just standing there like, so we have this scene, Lawson and Gwen together, Jack looking at them, looking at Gwen. They see each other, husband and wife, they know in that moment, they realize what's going on. And Lawson's just like, mm -hmm. I think these two need to have a conversation. And then he leaves. And that is the end of Lawson's plot line. The most anticlimactic thing I've ever seen in my life. I would almost be disappointed if this whole storyline wasn't so weird. A lot more things happened in the book that I left out because I honestly didn't find them interesting enough to share. I just wanted to share like the funniest bits or like the most insane bits. I'm aware that I'm clearly not the target audience for this and that massively contributes to me not enjoying this book because I don't think anyone over the age of 20 would enjoy a very graphic romance book about like 18 year olds. Uh, yet again, I ask who is the target audience? I don't know. What I will say, this video originally, I started filming this because I was trying to get out of a reading slump and I will say buddy reading, kind of bad book with a friend, really helps because I finished this book in like four days. So in the end, mission accomplished. I did cure my reading slump. Normally when I make videos like this, I share more like quotes from the book and it's just a little more scripted, but because I didn't know what I was going into, I didn't make any notes. I don't have any quotes because I was listening to the Dutch translated audiobook. So sorry if this video is a little bit more chaotic than what I usually do when I talk about books that I didn't like and do like in-depth reviews of those books. Um, but I hope it was still entertaining. And if you thought it was entertaining, subscribe. Thank you to all of my patrons with a very special shout out to all of my Elite Hidden Library members and welcome to the new Elite members, Victoria and Kim Lazars. Welcome! Uh, today, when this video is going up, is our first book club live discussion, which I'm super excited about. Um, so if you want to join the Patreon and the whole book club, also linked in the description. That being said, I hope you really enjoyed the video. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you soon in another video very soon. Goodbye.